Hey guys, what's up? Sando here. So I'm continuing my r 2 ladder duck journey and I promise that more r 2 ladder ducks will be reviewed around here. But today I'm testing probably the biggest and the heaviest duck that I ever put my hands on. This thing is huge as you can see. So this one is called Audio GD R7 2020 edition. So uh, let's check it out. If you don't really know what's the difference between uh, ladder ducks and Delta Sigma ducks, I uh, recommend checking out my uh, Dana Flips Aries and my Dana Flips Venus reviews, which you can check out probably around here. So before going deep with this review, first of all, I want you to know that there are a lot of duck manufacturers today that are using their own metal cases, their own engineering, their own circuit boards, and everything else are just off the shelf components that they can simply buy as duck chips, uh, crystal clocks, uh, USB boards, and so on. And there are very, very few duck manufacturers today that are not happy with off the shelf components uh, they can simply buy. So they just started developing their own uh, duck chips, their own software, their own code. So I have a much bigger respect for later ones um, that they basically strive for perfection no matter the cost. And for about three years now, Audio GD is proud to be one of those companies that are making their own hardware uh, ladder networks. So basically they own chips, they own uh, custom software that makes them tick and convert zeros and ones into butterflies and our stomachs. So uh, Audio GD currently has five uh, products, so five DACs in the hardware ladder uh, category. And uh, R7 seems to be the second best one from uh, the lineup. So it should sound pretty good. So in terms of size, I never seen a bigger DAC in my life. And it might sound like a diva, but it weights as an elephant at a whopping 15 kilos. This thing is heavier than my former integrated amplifier. It is heavier than my current power amplifier and heavier than any DAC or headphone amplifier that I had for testing. So it looks massive and really imposing too. And once I put it near my other equipment, I started realizing how big it is. It simply dwarfed everything and it occupied about one third of my desk table, which is a lot. It looks very audio GD if you know what I mean. So the front panel is made out of a 12 mm thickness aluminum plate. So there is a lot of aluminum put in this case, compared to some ducks that are using a thin metal banded around the corners. R7 is made out of CNC aluminum and the thinnest panels are having 5 mm in thickness. Having such a thick metal case, you can be sure that it will be immune to any wireless interference, which is nice to have, really. It might look a bit rough around the edges, with the bolts sticking out, which are not on the same level with the case, and the raw aluminum buttons on a completely black unit are triggering my OCD, but other than that, it is built to last a lifetime, and I didn't felt for a second that they were cutting corners to have it more affordable or anything like that. As for controls and connectivity, R7 is a pure duck at heart, so it doesn't carry any preamp functionalities, and as a result, the volume knob was dropped, which makes it look even better. It has the simplest front panel, as you can see, so from left to right, there is your on-off button, followed by the settings button which engages its menu once pressed and then you have the selector buttons to navigate that menu. Now look at that beautiful back panel. It has all the digital inputs you could possibly want. So you have your AAC, coaxial, BNC, optical, I2S and USB. As for outputs it offers three pairs of them as the usual XLR and RCA and something different called ACCC. So if that doesn't ring a bell, that is a current-driven analog output that can be used with a Creel equipment, with some Bakun audio gear and with others. As for the technology inside the R7, this one is using four DA7 version 2 modules for a fully balanced and fully discrete r resistor ladder network. When designing a high-performance DAC, a lot of the magic is actually happening in the analog domain, not only in digital. So after opening up the unit, I understood the definition of going all in in a DAC. Just take a closer look at those huge R-core transformers. Even big integrated amplifiers are not using so many transformers. Now look at how much importance Audio GD is putting to the output stage. It is simply massive and probably consumes a lot of energy. Power filtering is massive too. I see some big NGC capacitors that will clean up the power and will store some of that energy for great dynamic swings. In all honesty, I never saw such a massive circuitry 
for a commercial made duck. It is simply the definition of overdone and overkill in a very good way. Some of the best ducks that I've tested around here are consuming somewhere between 10 to maximum 25 watts of power and seeing that R7 is consuming 48 watts of power it is a clear sign of how powerful the output stage and how much power is needed to drive those four DAC modules. It already sends clear messages of what I should expect from it in terms of scale, in terms of depth and definition. Audio GD used the best femtosecond clocks available today, so two AcuSilicon for all digital inputs and another two Crystec clocks for the USB input. They incorporated an USB isolator too. Uh, even the tiny power supply for the USB board is a class A power supply, so that's really nuts. So enough with the talk, I'm eager to test this Goliath of a DAC with as many musical genres as I can. So in terms of overall sound performance, once I started playing with the oversampling mode, with non-oversampling mode, enabling or disabling that PLL, I understood that this will be a very difficult review to make. So you can make it sound super technical and super transparent by enabling that oversampling mode or you can make it sound uh, super smooth, uh, very natural, extremely textured by enabling the non-oversampling mode or you can match between them to have the best of both worlds if you want. So I sincerely never experienced such a big change in sound in any other DAC. Uh, so with uh, typical Delta Sigma DACs from the likes of uh, ESS Technologies or AKM you have uh, somewhere between uh, 5 and 7 digital filters but all of them are changing the frequency response uh, past the 20 kHz, so basically past our hearing abilities so in practice the difference between those filters is zero or close to zero however on R7 uh, it's on a whole new level as you can just tune it exactly to a liking as you want so R7 is really the definition of uh, open wide sound it's an airiness monster and probably the best when it comes to 3D pinpoint imaging of all the notes around the listener. So if you checked some of my reviews by now, you probably observed how much importance I'm giving to the transient response, so to the speed, uh, slam and kick. So it's basically the main reason uh, Dena Flip's Aries didn't impress me that much. So R7 is very different in this regard. And once PLL is disabled, uh, I'm feeling just a massive air force that is carried uh, towards me with every single note. So with an enormous output stage that R7 is having, uh, it would be unnatural having uh, a slow or a mellow transit response. So there is one area in the frequency response that always begs for attention on the R7. So that creamy, that full bodied, that deep fat bass response. So it is probably the first time when my former Matrix Audio uh, X-Saber Pro and my current Matrix uh, Element X were beaten at their own game. So I can only presume that uh, those huge R-Core transformers and that overkill capacitance played a very big role in achieving such an impressive low end. So in terms of background noise, I went as far and listened to the R7 at a much higher volume just to check if there is any background noise. And I did the same with the speaker setup, uh, so very close to them, to, to check is there any disturbing hiss. So no matter what I did, it sounded absolutely dead silent with my IEMs, with my big headphones, with loudspeakers. So I would be surprised really to hear any disturbing noise or any background noise, considering how big is the power supply, how big is the power filtering and how uh, isolated are all digital inputs. So the background noise is just uh, as dark and as silent as I heard it on Element X, um, connected to a passive power conditioner. So the funny thing is that if I removing that passive power conditioner, my other sources are um, uh, reacting accordingly, so basically lowering down their transparency. But I didn't feel the same on the R7. So with or without a power conditioner, uh, R7 sounded absolutely the same in my acoustic chain and in my home. So always clean, always transparent and free of any kind of noise. Moving on to the transient response, my favorite part. This is where I would normally tell you that uh, all the best Delta Sigma DACs are outperforming any of the best r 2 r ladder DACs. But at this point I no longer know if uh, this is valid for R7 or not. So if I'm engaging that PLL, so basically mimicking that Philips TDA 1540A sound, then there is a very distinct rounding of all the notes, like uh, their shape is not that defined, and the impact is somehow softened. 
But disabling PLL and enabling uh, oversampling in 8x mode, uh, the speed is improving tremendously, uh, so offering just a heftier kick into the chest that I can't recognize it anymore. So once I connected the Flux Lab Acoustics FCN10 to this unit and started playing some uh, bass case once upon a time in Midwest, normally this record should put me into a relaxed state and uh, it did, but the groovy nature of this album uh, was more apparent and more obvious and more engaging than usual. So I don't think I ever encountered uh, such a powerful bass guitar, such a impressive nice treble presence and kick. So I just pair it with a transient monster like the Flux FCN10, like a benchmark HPA4 or like with a Hegel integrated amplifier. And you'll hear the definition of transient response uh, with your speakers or with your headphones. So as far as r 2 ladder ducks go, from the ones that I have tested around here, uh, Audio GDR7 just takes the spot as the hardest slamming DAC and the one that knows how to impress a transient nut like myself. Now in terms of resolution, uh, if you are searching for details, then I strongly recommend disabling that uh, TDA 1541A mode, so basically PLL off. That will improve uh, the sharpness, uh, that will increase the detail level uh, and the leading edge of every note. So as with all art war ladder ducks, uh, resolution is not really priority number one, but transparency and the texture is really priority number one. So for example, with my uh, Matrix Audio Element X, uh, it might extract a little bit more resolution out of a very good recording. But on the other hand, with the R7, I can better feel the naturalness and the texture of uh, acoustic instruments. Uh, the mid-range just becomes uh, sweeter and more intimate and I can look just deeper into my music. So while uh, listening to the Dancing with the Moonlit Night by Genesis, the guitar plugs are becoming just uh, simply lifelike. Uh, the treble has just the right amount of zinc without being too much. Uh, detail retrieval is really on a very high level, but without attracting just uh, too much attention to it. So in the end, uh, detail is there in right doses and uh, you can spot it if you know where to look. As for scale and soundstage size, I want to tell you that uh, R7 is not really kidding around. I think it is throwing it much farther away than javelin throwing Olympic champions. So simply put, some of my music uh, sounds almost unrecognizable. So it is incredibly how much more air uh, was hidden there somewhere in my records. So I want to be clear that if a song is recording in a small uh, recording studio, then by any means it will sound that way. But if I'm listening to a live recording, uh, it simply opens up and widens uh, the stage to the maximum potential your speakers or your headphones are capable of. Now moving on to the living room, um, it feels like I should redo my uh, Bucard S400 review that you see behind me. So especially the sound stage size and the depth seems to be improving quite a lot. S400 are already crazy good when it comes to uh, pinpoint imaging and localization of all notes around the room and stage size. But with R7 at the top of the acoustic chain, I'm feeling like I'm listening to a full-blown stand floor speaker system, so the spaciousness is just uh, dial up to 11. So in terms of scale and uh, stage size on all three axes, I'm adding just another champion to my list. So I think that R7 and Denaflips Venus are currently the undisputed champions. So who will take the number one spot? We shall see. As for the frequency response, uh, R7 feels like a very big departure from all other DAX that I have tested around here. So the biggest highlight for me was definitely that uh, deep and that controlled bass performance. So uh, I had already quite some DAX around here that had an impressive low end, as few examples stopping D90 and uh, Matrix Audio Element X. But boy, R7 feels like a different animal altogether. So combine it with a hard slamming amplifier and you will unwillingly lower your usual listening volume just because of those punchy bass notes and because of those incredible dynamics. So the R2R uh, ladder ducks that I have tested in the past were good in here, uh, especially the Denafrips Venus was pretty great in the bass, but uh, they didn't really outperform the best ones in terms of uh, bass depth, detail, definition and kick. With R7, I finally realized that I can compare the bass performance of this unit with the best Delta Sigma DAX, and in the end it actually outperformed most of them in terms of bass performance. So I've heard just an impressive kick and amazing sustain, 
uh, bass went really down to the subsonics, uh, so it rumbled, it punched, it raised my mood level. So I didn't feel that it is a deviation from linearity, uh, more like this is how bass should be played and maintained. So that powerful output stage I think uh, is having just the last word in this frequency range. It doesn't come as a surprise to anyone that most of the Art War ladder ducks are having a soul-grabbing mid-range performance, a denser and a fuller tone. They always really shined in this department and R7 is no different to others. So I'm glad to report that I'm not spotting a decrease in transparency, how was the case of Dana Fripp's Aries. So R7 is just presenting the mid-range completely grain-free, so very involving, very musical and very pure. So the nice thing is that no matter the settings uh, I'm changing in that menu, the mid-range will always remain natural and deep. Another pleasant surprise was hearing those high-pitched notes, uh, very defined and very clear, uh, detailed and really transparent, but without the shrillness and the brightness a uh, cheap digital source will offer. So there isn't a sign of any roll-off, so um, it goes really to the highest octaves in a very detailed but non-aggressive way. So when it comes to treble, engaging that oversampling mode in 8x mode and disabling that PLL, I felt like listening to my own uh, Matrix Audio Element X. So it felt transparent, so really defined and uh, the micro detail was really there. The only thing that went missing was that extra crispness and that sharpness that uh, ESS Sabre designs are having. I also compared the R7 with the Dana Fripps Venus, which I still have on loan. But since I don't want to have this video super long or boring, please check out my detailed comparison in my written review, which you can find below. So going on into the conclusion, this was the most difficult but also the most rewarding uh, review to make. So uh, this is a first when I can call the same DAC as uh, fast and uh, slow sounding, hard slamming and easy going, uh, super detailed and uh, rolled off. So since uh, Artwork ladder DACs are relying on FPGA code, the manufacturer is basically telling it how it should sound and not the other way around how Delta Sima DACs are working. So if you like to tailor your sound and if you change your equipment quite often and your acoustic chain and you worry about uh, system matching, then I think that Audio GD R7 seems like a perfect uh, digital source to own. So it is really a chameleon and uh, really a system matching god. R7 sounded as the meanest and the punchiest DAC that I have ever tested. And it is also exchanging uppercuts with Dana Fripp's Venus for the title of the widest, the airiest and the deepest sounding DAC. So uh, it is not cheap by any means, but considering its immaculate performance, I consider its price of about uh, 2700 bucks fully justified. Ok guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. And as usual, listen to my music, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.